Let's take a look at Table 300.5. Table 300.5 covers the minimum cover requirements required when burying conductors or raceways. If we'll take a look here, along the top in column 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 explains what type of wire we're burying. Column 1 concerns uh, the direct burial of cables or conductors. Column 2 covers rigid metal conduit or intermediate metal conduit. Column 3 covers non-metallic raceways listed for direct burial without concrete encasement. Column 4 covers residential branch circuits. And Column 5 covers circuits for control of irrigation and landscape lighting. If we look over here along the left-hand column, the location of the wiring method or the circuit. For an example, if we were burying the cable in a trench beneath two inches of thick concrete, perhaps we were, using, we were burying a cable under a street or a parking lot. So just as an example, if you were asked a question, you were going to bury a conductor that's listed for direct burial under an airport runway, how many inches would it need to be? And we can see right here that it would be 18 inches deep. If we were going to do a direct burial conductor under a street or highway, you can see that it needs to be 24 inches deep. Suppose we were doing a residential branch circuit rated at 120 volts or less with a ground fault circuit interrupter protection, and this was going to be under 4 inch thick concrete exterior slab that will have no vehicle traveling over it, then I would need to bury it 6 inches for a direct burial or four inches if it's in a raceway, which would be like a conduit. So this is how we use table 300.5.